This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals recently reinstated Viacom's billion-dollar lawsuit against YouTube. To explain the case, to explain some of the lessons the companies can learn from the case, we bring in Jerry Ferguson, partner with Baker Hostetler, and author on their data privacy monitor. Jerry, first off, what's what's the background of the case? You know, this is kind of an older case, but but you know what happened there, and then what is Viacom alleging? Well, I think you make a good point that it is an old case. And I think an important thing to understand about this case is that it is about what YouTube was in 2005 and 2006 when it had recently been founded. It's not about what YouTube is today. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, although YouTube was promoted as a site for sharing home videos, the reality and, and the internal documents in this litigation show that m much, a majority of the content was copyrighted content that users were sharing. Mm -hmm. And so, the although uh, Viacom came up with a number of interesting and complicated legal theories, they all go back to a central allegation, which is that YouTube was publishing copyrighted material without permission of the owners. Mm -hmm. And YouTube's defense, in essence, was that that may have been happening, but we are protected by the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Mm -hmm. As long as we have takedown procedures that are consistent with the procedural requirements of the act, we don't have liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point that this isn't about YouTube now. YouTube now is much more mature than it was in 2005, 2004, um, and then. But what, you know, cutting to the core of this, what are some of the big lessons companies can learn from this case? I think the big lesson is that you can't avoid taking some responsibility for moderation of content on your site. Uh, many lawyers, uh, I've, I've been told by clients, that are giving the advice that if you want to have the protection of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and uh, have some insulation from uh, liability for copyright claims when you're letting users post content on your site, then don't moderate. As long as you don't moderate and you have a takedown procedure, you're not going to be liable. I think that the lesson learned from this and, and, and to back up a little bit, there's a long line of cases, including the decision from the district court in the uh, YouTube Viacom case, which suggests that that was pretty good advice. Yeah. You know, essentially, there was a long line of cases saying that as long as you had this takedown procedure in place and that there wasn't evidence that you had actual knowledge of infringing content, then... Uh, you could uh, essentially be immune from lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And essentially the content owner had to go after the person who posted the content. Mm -hmm. Now, wh where the Second Circuit has complicated that equation is by introducing this notion of willful blindness, which is a concept that's been around for a long time in uh, many different contexts where knowledge is a, is a relevant component of liability. But basically, the Second Circuit is saying that if you've got facts at your disposal, which are putting you on notice that something wrong may be going on here, you better be doing something to investigate it. Yeah. And so to, to kind of now apply this lesson to the companies that are emerging now, hoping to be the YouTube, the Twitter, the Facebook of the future, you know, any company that has a business model that's founded on the idea that we're going to be a vehicle for users sharing content, you have got to make sure that all of your personnel who are involved in the maintenance and the operation of the site understand that if you see something, say something. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, that's kind of New York City's yeah. uh, slogan for getting the citizens uh, mobilized in case to help with fighting t uh, terrorism, but if you see something that doesn't look right, say something. Yeah, definitely. And I think that the mistake that uh, some YouTube employees might have made back in 2005 and 2006 
is they saw something that didn't <laughs> look right to them, and then they put something. They, you know, they they described that something in emails that they circulated among one another, but they didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And why I really want to contrast that with YouTube of the day is, is since the filing of the Viacom suit, YouTube has developed its content identification tools that are very powerful in preventing the reposting of infringing content. They're working with content owners much more closely. They now have a, publishing alliances with content owners. And so, you know, for the, for the companies that want to become the YouTube of tomorrow, don't don't walk around with like you know uh, with blinders over your eyes like you know like an ostrich with your head in the sand. Have your takedown policy. I'm not saying that you need to actively moderate. I'm not saying you need to review every content before it's posted, but make sure your employees understand if they see something, say something, take steps to uh, so so that you are not implicated. In the sharing of copyrighted content without permission. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then, are there industries or certain entities where these lessons might be best learned soon? You know, who might find themselves in a similar position to YouTube? Because there are a lot of different entities out there who are relying on certain protections under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Uh, is are there certain industries or entities that come to mind when who who might be you know best applying these lessons soon? Certainly, this is going to be most relevant to a company that is a, to social media companies that have a business model predicated on your users sharing information. Certainly most relevant to those companies. But it's going to be relevant to any company that has a social media strategy. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you know, Free to Lay has gotten some very good publicity about the, uh, the Super Bowl commercials where they have users suggesting content and ideas those are great promotions yeah and those are promotions that a lot of other companies are looking at right now but I think an important lesson from this case is that if you're going to be trying to engage with your with your customers and encouraging your customers to make videos related to your brand uh, yeah have your DMCA policy in place that's going to be really important but don't follow the advice of, you know, no moderation whatsoever. Close your eyes because you can't be willfully blind. You, blind. You've got to make sure that your people who are responsible for administering the site understand that there are steps they should take if they independently see something that, that strikes them as a, as a copyright violation. I'm not claiming that that's easy to do, but I'm claiming that with proper training, you can get a staff that understands its responsibilities. And I think that's, that's the lesson learned for any company entering the social media world. Yep. It, it's very interesting. I think this is going to have, it's going to be interesting to watch. I mean, though YouTube is much more true now than it used to be, there are other companies who aren't up to YouTube's caliber now, and they're closer to where YouTube was in 2005, 2006. So it's going to be interesting to see what impact this has for other companies out there in the social media space right now. Uh, once again, that was Jerry Ferguson of Bar Baker Hostetler. For more information on this case, be sure to check out their blog. It's the Data Privacy Monitor. It's at datapricymonitor.com. And, of course, be sure to check out. We have numerous posts on this on LXBN as well. So be sure to have a look at those at lxbn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Tom.